So if you clicked on this video, you're either probably on the verge of buying yourself a new M1 machine, whether it is the M1 all the way through the M1 Ultra, or you just purchased one and you're trying to find out how well, if at all, the Microsoft suite of products works on these new M1 machines. So if that's you, you clicked on the perfect video. Let's find out exactly how well Microsoft Office works on the M1 machines because I think you guys are gonna be extremely surprised. But let's get into it. Hi everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about the Microsoft Office suite of productivity apps like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Teams, Outlook, and we're going to see how well they run on the M1 MacBook Air and all the M1s moving forward. Because when the M1 originally released, we did a video talking about that, Microsoft hadn't actually converted everything over into that M1 architecture to work perfectly on the M1, and it's been about 18 months now at this point, so let's find out exactly how well it works, and let me show you now, and we're going to move on to the computer. So let's just get right into this video, everybody. The first thing I do want to show everybody is exactly which Mac I'm on, which one I'm using. So I have the baseline model, the OG M1 2020 MacBook Air. I have an eight gigabyte of RAM variant and only I think 256 gigs of storage. So this is the absolute baseline one. So if you're thinking of picking up one of these MacBooks, just know that I am using the baseline. So if you get anything even a little bit better or with a little bit of a higher spec or an M1 Pro or M1 Max or M1 Ultra, so it's gonna work even better on those computers. And I am running the latest version of 12.3 Mac OS Monterey, and so far it's been amazing. But now let's talk about how to install these Microsoft applications. So you can see that I have them all down here, but a little bit of advice to the people that are actually downloading it for the first time. So there's actually two ways that you can kind of do it, but I'm going to recommend doing it one way over the other. So technically, if you go into Safari, go into your web browser, go into office.com and sign in to your Microsoft Office account, you can actually download them directly from there. So you can press over here, install Office. And you can see that it's already doing it, but I actually don't want to do that. We're going to stop. And if you go this route, you can see that it's going to work and it's going to install. But I did run into issues when installing it directly from the Office website. I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe it's Microsoft giving us the non-M1 versions of them. So in order to bypass that and avoid all that troubleshooting, because I ended up having to uninstall every single application and then reinstall it via the App Store. So that's a perfect segue. So in order to get these installed correctly, go into the App Store, type in Microsoft and go to the Microsoft Office application. So here you can see that it's actually a bundle of applications. You click on it and if you download it, it brings, I believe, six, six of the main Microsoft applications and these are all M1 ready, M1 compatible and built for the M1. So you have all the main applications. You have Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Outlook. You also have OneNote and then OneDrive. So I actually just focus on these main four right here and then I also use Microsoft Teams, but I'll show you guys how to get Microsoft Teams a little bit later in the video. But as you can see, once it's installed, ignore the rating. I think it's just people being annoying, but it's way better than 3.2. I'd give it like a 4.7. But the next thing I'm gonna show everybody is just how quickly these applications open. So if you can see, they're all totally closed off. They're not open. And I'm gonna start to just pop open Microsoft Word to see how quickly it opens. And there you go, like literally less than two seconds. Now if I open Excel, PowerPoint and Outlook, they start bouncing around and then they start opening immediately, everybody. They open very, very quickly, which is something that I could not say with any Intel-based MacBook either in the past or even today. I don't know who would buy an Intel-based MacBook at this point, but they still are technically available, so if you want to pick one up, you can. But at all costs, avoid any Intel-based MacBooks because this is not the experience that you're going to get when using Microsoft Office on these Intel ones. I used to have a MacBook Air that would literally get so warm and so loud whenever I would just open up something as simple as a Microsoft Word document. So keep that in mind when you are deciding to get the M1 MacBook Air, it does work extremely well with these applications. So just to show you guys a little bit more, right? Let's Apple quit out of all of these, get rid of Microsoft PowerPoint. They're all closed down and let's do it again, right? Let's go Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel, Word, and they all open within five seconds, all four of them. Name another way that this happens on any other computer, even on Windows based computers, it still opens pretty slowly because they're still running on Intel chips. Yes, they're built a little bit better, but again, overall, it's, it's going to run even smoother through Mac OS, Mac OS 12.3 with an M1 processor. Another thing that I want to mention about the Microsoft Office suite, if you guys are already in the Microsoft ecosystem and you have a login, all you have to do is sign into one application and make sure that you're signed into that one and then everything else populates. So these are things that are not on my computer. They're actually on my OneDrive, right? So if I go to file, open recent, these are all files that were inside of my OneDrive from before that open immediately, right? And it's perfect to see. And then you have things like Microsoft PowerPoint, which works extremely well. And that can, you know, Apple edit to get even more Microsoft ones. Like look how quickly these presentations open. 
we're on seven presentations and it's not hiccuping whatsoever. So at least you have peace of mind knowing that the applications work extremely well on the M1 side and they open quickly, they run how they're supposed to, and they're full-fledged Microsoft Office applications. They're not watered down versions for Mac OS. And that's where you have to give kudos to a company like Microsoft for really spending time, spending a little bit of development money to make sure that these things run and they run correctly inside of MacBooks. Because I guess Microsoft is realizing that more and more of their users on the Microsoft side, they're actually using Microsoft on Mac computers and they're using Microsoft on iPad OS and iOS 15. And they just have to make sure that those applications stay at a certain level of quality in order for people to continue to use them on Mac systems because if not, they're gonna leave Microsoft Office for Google or they're gonna leave Microsoft Office for Apple native applications. But overall, I'm extremely happy with the performance of the entire Microsoft suite. So one application that I do wanna talk about, which I mentioned earlier, was Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams, it technically isn't built for the M1 quite yet. So it is still running that same architecture from the Intel side. But basically what happens is that Apple in the back end has an application called Rosetta. And if you guys were around when the M1 was first released, this was part of Apple's plan, right? Get Rosetta to get Intel based applications to quickly convert on the back end. So users don't get the detriment of using Intel based applications on their M1 machines. So it still works, it works perfectly. I use it on a daily basis to run meetings and things like that. So it does work, it just opens a little bit more slowly, but I haven't had like any stutters, any jitters with video chat, the messaging feature still works perfectly fine. Just know that that one isn't built for the M1, but overall it's still like 98% of the experience that you get with the M1 built ones. So that is what you get from Microsoft Teams. And as you saw, it wasn't part of that bundle. So you actually have to go to office.com and download the Microsoft Teams app directly. So if you type in Microsoft Teams, all you have to do is go in here, sign in, and then download it. And then lastly, one of the main questions that I got from people, especially from the last video that I made about this, was is it free or how much does it cost? So Microsoft, the suite of products is not free. Yes, they're technically free to download. So if you do not have a subscription and you go into the App Store down here, you can still come in here and download all the applications, but they won't work, or at least you can, you can only have a view form of viewing documents. So if somebody sends you a Word document and you have the Word application installed on your computer like I do down here, then you can still open that document. You just won't be able to do anything with it. You can't edit it, you can't change anything. I don't even think you can email it to anybody or things like that. So in order to get a fully functioning Microsoft Office, you have to download the subscription or pay for the subscription. So here they have personal ones. I just wanted to let it make it very clear to people. It's $100 a year for the new rebranded Microsoft 365. And then they have more business focused accounts like this one right here, which is the business standard for $12.50 per user per month. So I actually have the four business one. This is the model that I go with, $12.50, and you get everything right here, including Microsoft Teams, Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint. And let me know in the comments below if you guys do want some information on things like Publisher, Access, Exchange, and SharePoint, because I can definitely make a video rounding out those other ones, which aren't used as frequently as the Microsoft main suite of products like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. But I did want to give you guys that caveat that it does cost money. You can technically download the apps for free, but to use them and use them fully, you need to have a subscription with an email. And then once you have that email, you just sign in to the Microsoft applications like Microsoft Word right here, and then you're good to go. And then the very final thing that I will mention about applications like Microsoft Excel, this has more to do with the limitations of this physical computer versus the limitations on the application itself. So for the most part, and for 99% of people, Microsoft Excel on a baseline MacBook Air is gonna work perfectly fine. It's only when you start dealing with very, very large Excel files, Excel files that are huge. I'm talking Excel files with at least 100,000 lines or rows of actual data then it starts to slow down your computer a little bit. But again, I'm dealing with only eight gigs of RAM, so if you wanna future-proof yourself, maybe spend another $200 on the 16 gigs of RAM, then by all means, I do recommend it. But if you're somebody that's just playing with Excel lightly, if you're just doing little balance sheets like this, or personal budgeting, you're doing small formulas, nothing crazy, you'll be fine with the eight gigs of RAM. But once you start dealing with huge databases, with pivot tables, with macros, I do recommend maybe getting a little bit more RAM, just to future-proof yourself, and make sure that you can pretty much open those larger files. But that's pretty much all of Microsoft office in a nutshell let's finish up this video and go to the normal view so that's pretty much going to do it for this video everybody like you saw the microsoft suite of products or the microsoft suite of applications it works extremely extremely well like it baffles me how much better it works just by changing the chipset i remember i had a 2019 intel i5 like macbook air i think it cost me about 1700 dollars. it might have been an i7 with i think almost a terabyte of storage 16 gigs of ram and this runs circles around that computer. So this is the baseline model M1 MacBook Air. I spent $900 on it. 
baseline storage, baseline RAM, just a pure M1. And you see how fast these applications open, how quickly they run. And overall, the experience is just extremely fluid, easy to use, and very, very familiar, especially even if you're coming from the Windows 10 and Windows 11 side. And if you are somebody that's new to the Mac world, new to the M1 world, now you can have some peace of mind knowing that the, especially the main products, the main applications through the Microsoft suite, the main six that we've talked about, they work extremely well, they open extremely quickly, and they sync across all of your OneDrive devices. So if you were thinking of taking the plunge on an M1 product and an M1 MacBook Air or M1 Mac Mini or even the new M1 Ultra Mac Studio that's $8,000, just know that the Microsoft products will work and will work perfectly on these M1 machines. But that's gonna do it for this video. Leave a comment down below which next application you guys wanna to touch base on because this one was more of an overall synopsis of how well it runs and how well it works how to install it, and now I want to do a deeper dive into each individual application, most likely starting with PowerPoint or Excel because those are the ones that everybody asks about the most. But that's going to do it for this video. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin right here. And if you guys want to find out more or maybe watch some older videos of my Microsoft reviews on M1 machines and even the iPad Pro, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, peace everybody.